Okay, well, as some, of, as some of you may have noticed, I haven't done a video in quite some time. I've had a few ideas rolling around, and I just never really got around to doing any filming. But, uh, anyways, uh, this trick I want to share with you, um, I'm really quite excited about because it really uh, utilizes some very uh, powerful principles I've learned over the last couple of years, particularly from the names uh, John Bannon and uh, Aldo Colombini. Uh, these principles, they just fit so well together for this effect, and I just, uh, I'm really pleased with it. it. It will take a little bit to learn. It may seem a little complicated at first, but really when you get it, it really is simple, really easy to do. Now what it is, basically, is it's an any card at any number effect, which, you know, you've probably noticed on my channel, I really like any card at any number type tricks. Um, but this one has a bit of a surprise with it, and a little sort of twist. And also you can use a borrowed deck of cards. There's no setup involved. And uh, it's and also it's it's practically a hands-free trick. And I say practically because uh, when the spectator names their uh, random chosen number and card, actually mind you, they don't actually they don't even mention their card. It's just a thought of selected card. Uh, the uh, the number is not mentioned until after the deck is in the spectator's hand so the performer never touches a deck when they mention their number for the first time so it really I think adds to the power of this effect so anyways I'll um, show you uh, basically how the effect looks and uh, you know again like most of my tricks in my videos you notice I don't really perform the tricks as such I just you know, attempt to give you a description of, of the general effect and I'll leave the you know the performance to you of course and your skills and how to present it to really make it a powerful trick. Now what you want to do first off is of course have the spectator shuffle the cards and again like I said it can be a borrowed deck. Now to start off the effect generally starts out like this you would um, attempt to um, sort of pick up on a number that they're thinking of between 10 and 40. And you explain that you want them to think of a number between 10 and 40 uh, because you don't want their card to fall too close to the ends of the deck. You, you know, you want it to keep it generally within the deck away from the top and bottom cards. So if you have the spectator to secretly just think of any number between, and it's important you say between 10 and 40. So let's just say, for this example, they're thinking of the number 25. Okay, so at the beginning of the effect, the uh, performer would first um, deal uh, cards, counting them out loud, and attempting to pick up on the number they're thinking of. So he'd just deal like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. And he'd stop about here and mention, okay, is the number you're thinking of 31? And then the spectator would, of course, say no, that's not the right number. And then the performer would just square up the cards and say, okay, well that's funny, I, I thought that's probably about what you'd be thinking of, but that's okay. What I'd like you to do is, and then the performer would go on to explain to the spectator to think of a, a different number between 10 and 40, just so they don't think there's anything fishy. So let's just say now the, the spectator thinks of the number 23, okay? So what uh, the performer would instruct the spectator to do next is to cut about a quarter of the deck off the top and to further mix the cards and what we're going to do is get the spectator to uh, come up with a completely random card uh, based on using their secret two digit number that they're thinking of so let's say like I said they're thinking of the number 23 so what they would do is they would look at their cards and the performer would instruct them to add the two digits of their two-digit number together so that they have a single digit, or they might have a two-digit answer, that's fine too. Whatever answer they have, secretly count from the top card of their hand over 
to their number, and whatever card they land on, that's going to be their secret random card. So there's no psychology involved. They're just they're just landing on a completely random secret card. So in this case, 23, they would add the two digits together to get five. So they would secretly count five cards: one, two, three, four, five. They would, they would arrive, of course, at the seven of spades. They secretly secretly remember the seven of spades. They are then told to close the cards, the packet up, set the packet down, and then. Uh, the performer would ask the spectator to cut a little over half of the remaining cards on the table and just bury the packet to hide any evidence of whatever number they could have counted to or whatever um, card they could have arrived at. And furthermore, they can have the spectator cut the cards as many times as they like to totally lose their card in the packet. Now, the spectator now, of course, is reminded to, re to remember their t secret two-digit number and their card. So in this case, they're remembering, of course, the seven of spades, a total random card, and their random number that they thought of, the uh, uh, 23, I believe. So they're remembering 23 and the seven of spades. So the performer then displays the cards and explains that there's no possible way of ever knowing what card out of all of these cards that they could be thinking of or what number they could have possibly have thought of. And the cards are then squared all up into the full deck and handed back to the spectator. Now, from here on out, this is where the hands-free part comes in. The, the performer never touches the deck. The spectator has the deck in their hands the whole time. And again, they haven't revealed the number they thought of yet or the card that they're thinking of. They are then asked for the first time now, with the deck in their hands, what is the secret two-digit number they're thinking of? They then, of course, reveal that they're thinking of the number 23. They're then instructed to, in, in the next bit, to deal off 23 cards onto the table. And, of course, that would be amazing if they arrived at their selected card after dealing 23 cards, a typical any card at any number. But the little twist here is just to uh, eliminate any possibility of suspicion of any kind of mathematical wizardry, what we're going to do is after they've dealt their secret number 23, they are also going to deal the cards spelling the answers to the vague questions about their secret card. And they're not going to ever say what their card is. They're just going to deal the uh, answer to the color of their card and the suit of their card. So. For instance, they've named, for the first time now with the deck in their hand, 23. So they deal 23 cards down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Now they're told to stop at their number, and now they're to answer two vague questions about their secret card. The first question, the color, is it black or red? Now in this case, of course, they're, they're thinking of the seven of spades, so they're going to say black. So they simply spell one card for each letter spelling black. And again, you can remind them these are totally different spellings. If it was red, it would have only been three cards for red. Black, of course, is five cards to spell black. So they spell B-L-A-C-K, just like that. And then Lastly, the second and last question is the suit. And being that it's black, it's either, of course, got to be a spade or club. So their card, of course, being the seven of spades, they spell spade. S-P-A-D-E. And, believe it or not, the card they arrive at proves itself to be their card, the seven of spades in this case. That's totally how the trick looks. It's, like I said, it's completely impromptu. No setup. Works every time. Um, there are actually two other potential endings that are slightly different. Well, quite a bit different, but the same idea. Just counting their number and then spelling answers to their card. So I'll go in to further explain those two potential endings, and then I will show you exactly how this trick is done. So... Um, Maybe I'll just cut it here for now. I'll end the video here because I think my batteries might run out. And uh, I'll leave a separate video for the uh, 
for the to explain the the two other potential endings that can happen and the actual tutorial and exactly how this is done. So, thank you for watching. We'll see you at the next video.